as as I've as I've gotten older and um, hopefully a little wiser and a little more mature. Every every time I'm afforded the opportunity to step up here, I, I understand the weight of what's happening and what, what God's about to do, and it, it, it can almost be frightening <laughs> because you're, you're stepping in such a holy place and His presence is here. I don't know if you can, but the living God's presence is in this room. Without it, we're done. We're toast. And so can you just, for 30 more seconds, just say, give me Jesus. Give me more Jesus. Just, just, just tune your heart in to his heart right now in this moment. So thankful for the presence of God, aren't you? How about, you know, we, we have the presence of God. We've got the man of God who, though he's a stunt dad, I believe he's also the church dad. And he, and he fathers this house with such excellence. Can we just for a moment, now that we've honored God, can we honor the man of God, Pastor Matthew? my pastor and my friend and I'm so grateful for you in my life. You've uh, definitely have changed my life for the better. So thankful for you and Abby and your entire family. Thank you. Thank you worship team, appreciate you guys. Let's give it up for the worship team real quick, come on. Aren't you guys thankful for his presence? Thankful to be here? Thankful you woke up with his breath in your lungs this morning? Thankful that you got here safely? Right? Thankful that you're healed. Thankful that you're saved. Thankful that you're known and seen by the living God. Come on, somebody shout. You got to be, come on. That's something to be to like thankful for, right? Listen, I know it's St. Patrick's Day and I didn't wear any green and I don't look too exciting. But I'm just saying, he's exciting. He's exciting. We ought to be excited to be here this morning because I can tell you this, he's got a word for each and every one of you. This has been something that's been stirring in my heart for probably six to eight weeks now. And I could probably turn it into a 25 part message because it brings that much weight to it. But I'm gonna condense it into two weeks. We'll, we'll feed you, it's gonna be okay. Okay? They didn't catch that, that they're gonna be here two weeks faster. <laughs> Some of you are like, no, wait a minute. I, I got green ham and eggs to go eat somewhere. God bless you. My, the, though I didn't wear green, the words on my screen are green, okay? Just, just saying. And I'm as Irish as they come, I promise. But let's, let's just pray real quick before I even get into his word. I want to honor him with just by saying, thank you, Lord, for giving us your presence today. Thank you for your word and about what, you, about what you're going to do today. And I'm going to pray your word right now that says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer. Let this not be your performance, Lord, but preaching of your word that has the power to change, to transform, to save, and to heal every heart in this room. I declare it and I decree it in Jesus' name. And if you're with me, you shout amen. amen. So listen, Psalm 19, 41, 14, I just, I, I just, uh, just prayed it, but now let, let's, let's, let's read it together. The, way, the, the message today is called The Way with words. 
because there is a way that your words go, either to life or death, but we'll see what happens with them here. It says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart stop there. What he's saying is, let, let, let my words line up with where my heart is at. Let my heart line up with what pleases you, what's acceptable to you. Because look, there's a lot of times we allow a lot of things that go in here that aren't acceptable. And the things that come out of our mouth are even less acceptable. So we want to make sure that what we allow in here lines up with him so that it comes out how we want it to be and how it's good for him. And then I want to back that up with Matthew 12, 34, 37, and it's in the Passion Translation. And to me, the Passion Translation is like, it's like the street version or like the ghetto version, you know, it kind of goes a little raw for us, you know, but it's passionate, it brings something to it. And it says this, it says, in verse 34, you have minds like a snake pit. Ouch. Thanks, Lord. <laughs> How do you suppose what you say is worth anything when you are so foul-minded? See, it's your heart, not the dictionary, that gives meaning to your words. A good person produces good deeds and words in season after season, and an evil person is blight on the orchard. There it is. Pay attention, listen. Let me tell you something. Every one of these careless words is going to come back to haunt you. What he's saying is you better be careful what you say because if you don't say the right thing, it's going to come back and it's going to eat and bite you where it doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Where it doesn't feel good. It's going to hurt you. It's going to haunt you. We're going to be accountable for every word that comes out of our mouth standing before the Lord. We better watch what comes out. We better pay attention. We better take an inventory. We better to just be careful with what's being said. But more importantly, be, in, be, be aware of what's going in because what goes in is ultimately what comes out. And he says, it's going to come back to haunt you. And watch this. There will be a reckoning. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can either be your salvation or they can be your damnation. You choose. You choose what, 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 well, how you live and, and what you experience by what you say. But it all starts with what you think about too. Because let the, I want my meditation, what I'm meditating on to make sure that before I drop it down into here and let it come out here, that I capture it by, by the authority of Christ. I gotta take those thoughts captive because if I don't take those thoughts captive, I'm in trouble. See, I know this. I know that we have about fifty to 70,000 thoughts a day. And not all those thoughts are for us. And the, and the thing is, is if we don't capture those thoughts, you know what happens? We rinse, repeat, and recycle them the next day. So 50 becomes 100, 100 becomes 200, 200 becomes 400, and the next thing you know, we're in the darkest place we've ever been because we never took the thought to capture it. And so then what happens is when we start... Thinking dark, we start speaking dark, and we start living dark. And we end up in places we never thought we'd ever be before. That's why I believe a lot of people end up in divorce, because they start thinking the negative and start, thinking, start stop thinking about the negative and start thinking the positive and about what God's Word says and how they can overcome it and they can get past it. They stay stuck. My intention today, I promise you, is to encourage you. <laughs> Okay, that, that's my intention. And I hope that God challenges you and I hope God convicts you and at the same time, I hope God comforts you. I hope you get transformed by the renewing of your mind because you're gonna hear the word in a different way today. It's still God's word. And that's what has the power to change and transform us. Some of you, I might step on your feelings a little bit. But you know what? Some of you need your feelings stepped on a little bit. Because it's your feelings that are taking you to places that you don't belong. Some of you are being so led by your feelings and your emotions. And feelings and emotions are this. They're a roller coaster. They come and they go and they come and they go. And they're so irreliable. But you know what I know about God's word? Is it's constant. It never changes. It's the same yesterday, today. When I wake up tomorrow, his word is still the same. I can count on it. I can bank on it. I can't count on my feelings. Because here's what I know. Here's what I know about feelings. I'll just speak for me. One minute I can be feeling great, and then a Prius will pull in front of me, and I'm not feeling so great. 
You guys, most of the church knows my deal with Priuses, right? I actually had one on the way to church this morning. No, I was doing a little over the speed limit, okay? A little. I, it felt like NASCAR on the 15 this morning, I'm just saying. I had a Prius challenging me on the freeway today. I got a six-cylinder twin turbo, and that thing was like, let's get up and go. I'm like, what, what happened? Like, God reversed me today or something. I don't know. Show me something different. The Prius one. I couldn't get pulled over and not show up for church, so. But too often our feelings are getting in the way. Like I said, man, if they, they will lead you in the darkest places, but, everybody say but. but. Not your backside, but. But is a transitional word. It takes us from looking this way to going this way, a different direction. So I want us to go a different direction, and I want us to go to the word in Psalm 119, 105, where it says this, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's one step by faith at a time, following him, letting him light the path, letting his word light where I'm going. Let me follow him. It's like, for me, I feel like God's got like this little tiny flashlight. And he's saying, okay, now use faith. Trust me. Trust me. Don't go by your feelings because your feelings are like this. Right? They're all over the place. But when he's got his light there and I'm, I, and I'm operating in faith, just taking them steps and saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm going exactly where I need to be and I'm in front of exactly who I need to be in front of. And more importantly, you know where it leads us to? Truth. Truth. Whenever I get into his word, I can find truth and the truth will set you free. Stop basing everything on your feelings. Start basing your th everything going on around you, in you, whatever, by faith. Just, just operate in faith. Instead of, instead of that, you know, the whole thing for COVID was fear over, or faith over fear, whatever. Faith over feelings, okay? Trust God. And here, here's, here's, here's a great reason why. It's because in 2 Timothy 3.16, now, Pastor just talked about 316 being yesterday, and this is kind of like a double dose to 316, so it's two times the, the amount, and never mind, some of you got it, I got it. It's gonna be it's gonna be double worth it, okay? But in 2 Timothy 316, it says all scripture is inspired by God. When it says inspired, it means that it's been breathed out by the living God for our use. I would much rather take what God has breathed out and put in front of me than what the world has to offer to try to tell me to do this. I would rather have the fresh breath of God than the stenchy breath of the world to inspire me. It inspires me to do what? Let's see. It's, it's useful to teach us what's true and to make us realize what's wrong in our lives. I can guarantee you this. If you will open this thing up, you guys remember this thing? Okay, some of y'all remember? That if we'll open it, it'll actually expose the dark things and the lies in our life and go, hey, here's truth, walk in it. It just kind of just cracks the lies off of you, all the lies that people have been speaking over you, all the lies that you've been believing yourself, all the, it's just all the junk, it just goes, get rid of it. All by just opening this book and reading it. But I'll just say this to you. This is my... Uh, belief, we'll call it that, that I believe God didn't give us his word just to read it, but he gave us his word to become it. Because we can get so much, of it, so much of it in us that it will actually come out of us. It'll be who we are. It'll be our character. And that's who we want it to be like, right? Because Ephesians 5, 1, he says, imitate me, mirror me, look like me to the world. But you can't do that if you're messed up in your feelings, and I just want you to know, research shows that, it, that it, like, it's so much easier to believe the negative. And so then the negative becomes our narrative. Which means then, the narrative in your heart is what? Ugly. And there's a lot of ugly people running around, beautiful on the outside, ugly on the inside, because they've been believing the lies of the world, and made them their own, made them their identity. Let me ask you this. What does God say about you? 
Well, what does God say about you? Everybody just went blessed, right? Laura, you're blessed, right? Brian, you're blessed. Matthew, Pastor Matthew, you're loved. Right? We all have something. I'm blessed. I'm known. I'm seen. I'm loved. Come on, look at, look at all the things. I'm healed. I have more than enough. I'm a conqueror. Do you see all the things that you could be saying about yourself? But we've allowed the thickness of, of, of darkness come over, and that's become our truth. And the truth is not what that is, it's what God says about you, how he sees you. Remember, remember I told you, told all the, the young people that God had a word for you today, right? All the young ladies right here, look up here, I, I had a con, there you go, eye contact. You know what God says about you? That you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what that means? You're unique. You're a one of one. It means you don't have to try to be somebody else. You don't have to try to be like Taylor Swift. You don't have to try to be like the next whoever she is. You are gifted in, in, in just in who you are. When God was in, when, when he was in your mom's womb, he was taking you and he was knitting you and he was, he was creating you and he said, ah, this is good, this is perfect, this is exactly who I want her to be. I'll take it a step further. The Bible says that, that you are um, a weaker vessel. Every woman in here is a weaker vessel. Ouch. It doesn't feel good. Let me, let me break it down. When you break down the context of weaker vessel, it means that you're irreplaceable. You're like a fine piece of china. How's that sound? See, but what happened for there for a moment, you let your feelings get in the way of truth. Truth is that you're a one of one, you're one of a kind, and that you're irreplaceable and you're invaluable. That's who you are, ladies. Every man in this room, listen to this. In Exodus 15.3, it says this about God. It says, God is a warrior. And if you're created in his image and likeness, what are you? A warrior. So guess what? When you wake up tomorrow morning... Stand in front of that mirror and go, you're a warrior. And whatever comes your way today, you got this. You don't have to be a warrior. You can be a warrior now. Just flip it. Declare God's word over your life. That's where I want to take us today is that God's word is so profound and, 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 it's, and it's just enough. It's actually more than enough. Because in my humanness, I say it's enough. But you know, in reality, it's more than I could ever think. It's that grand. So why don't we then use it to speak it over ourselves and over our circumstances and over everything in front of us? What he says matters and what we say matters. And as long as the two line up, we're in good shape. However, in Proverbs 18, 21, it says this, that there is life and death in the power of the tongue. And most of you have heard that scripture before, right? And you know it. The problem is you just don't know it. Because if you knew it, you'd speak differently. You would speak differently about yourself, about your spouse, about your kids, about your job, about your employer, about your church. Come on. Some of you are speaking about the things you don't like about this church. Well, guess what? It's not your church. It isn't for you. It's all about him anyway. Right? We're here to bring glory to God, not glory to you. And if that causes church hurt, there goes your feelings again. <laughs> oh my gosh, truth, Tommy. <sighs> Let me ask you something. What are you speaking about your marriage? What are you speaking about your, your kids? Ask yourself, what am I speaking? Like, what, have, what you've said about the person next to you. For some of you, because it's a worldly way of doing things, we speak about divorce. And divorce is so easy to be like, that's like, it's like my emotions and my feelings, that's the first place I go. But I'm, I don't like how I'm feeling, I'm just going to go get, get divorced. The word says, though, that love endures through everything. Love never gives up. I thought you said you love them. Well, until my feelings got in the way. And most of the time, saying I love you is a feeling anyway. That's why I said he gave you his word to become it. Because then it's your character, then, then, there's, then it's a non-negotiable. 
becomes who you are. And we wonder why we're getting the same results. You know why we're getting the same results? Because we're saying the same stupid, dumb things. Day after day, I'm broke. I don't have enough. I'm sick. And that's why you stay sick. And there you are. We really need to stop speaking the world and start speaking the word. Men, husbands, come on. Men, where's all, 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 where's all the men at in this room? Four of us, okay. Wow. I bet I, I, bet I get a better response with the ladies. Huh? Where's all the ladies in the room? Should we try it again, men? Where are my men at in the room today? Praise God, they showed up for second service. Listen, men, listen. Women are incubators. Women are like incubators. What you speak into them, what you sow into them, what you, what you put into them, that's what they will give birth to. But most of you have been speaking so bad to your wives that you developed an ugly kid. So if you don't like the ugly kid that you develop, get rid of it, start speaking life, and then watch something else create. Create something different with your words. First service, Pastor was talking about um, the, the, the garden where um, Adam and Eve had met, met God to talk, and it was a certain time of day, it was, it was the, the perfect time of day, and it was in the cool of the day, right? And in the cool of the day, you notice that he didn't come to talk to him when it was the heat of the day. It wasn't late at night. It wasn't first thing in the morning. It was like the perfect atmosphere, right? For God to come and just say, hey, let's talk. And what I, what I see in this next verse in, in Proverbs 15:1, it says that a gentle answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. And what I'm saying to us, men, is this, that we have the ability, the ability to create the perfect atmosphere for our families. Just by a gentle word, not a harsh one. You don't have to be harsh. You don't have to come in like you're the man. We already know. There is a difference. So we can see it. You don't have to like go, I'm so whatever. But you can come in and, and speak life and speak love and be gentle in your approach. That creates the perfect atmosphere for the perfect family. Perfect relationships. If you're a boss, if you're an employer, you don't have to come in like everybody knows you're the boss. They know you signed the check, it's okay. I'm now a boss of people. And I have a team that works for me. And they're not all on the same page, but you know what? I speak life into them. Every time I speak to them, I speak humbly and I speak softly because they already know I'm the guy in charge. I don't need to prove it. Hey, now ladies, it's your turn. Proverbs 14.1, it says, a wise woman builds her house Right? Builds her house, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands, or let's just say her own words. So ladies, you have the ability to either build a great, amazing house where everything's peaceful, or you can rip it apart to shreds just by, how you, how you, by your attitude, by your, by your harsh words, by your negative words. All, see, see where I'm going? Either build it or tear it down. And for those of you I'm looking around, I know some of you have been in, in Michelle and I's marriage coaching, and that's one of our standards. It's all about how we speak to each other. And I know homes have been changed just by the way that each of you speak to each other. Marriages have changed. Relationships have changed. Think about this, ladies. How do you speak to your kids as the result you're going to get? If they're a terror, well, what are you saying about them? Oh, is it? How's this one? Oh, they're just in their terrible twos. How many of you heard that one? That's why they're terrible. How about they're in their terrific twos and I'm blessed to have them? Because you don't understand, every child is a gift, an inheritance from God himself. 
So those are not terrible kids. Those are terrific kids. And they're a gift from him. And everything that comes from him is good, not bad. So stop speaking death and start speaking life. Ladies, you know what? Your words have the ability to uh, strengthen your man, to shape your man, just, just, just by your words. I'll give you an example. Many years ago, when Michelle and I first got married, I was so insecure and so needy of uh, being told how great I am all the time, um, what a wonderful husband, wonderful dad, and I was the exact opposite, I promise. But feed me, please. Tell me how good looking I am. Come on, somebody. Tell me, tell me, tell me, right? Once I got a revelation of God and I allowed his word to go from here to here, I didn't need those words of affirmation anymore because what he said about me was more than enough. You understand? Like that, that totally went away. Like it just like vanished one day. It was gone. And I... I was so thankful because it was so, it's a lot to have to expect that from somebody and then be disappointed all the time. But now I can tell you this, what's, what's crazy amazing is here we are, we've been divorced, we're married and, and things are amazing and now every day, and I don't know how, for how many years Michelle has done this, every day from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, she tells me how amazing I am, what a great father I am, what a great husband I am, what a great leader I am how amazing good looking I am. Um, but she's a wise woman building her house. She could look at the things that I don't do right. She could, she could, she could focus on the things that I don't do right, but she chooses not to. She could say, man, he never takes the trash out. If you knew our driveway, thank God I don't. But like, she's like, she, does, she doesn't complain about it. She's done complaining about me, women. She's done complaining, men. Stop complaining. Proverbs 31, 26 says this. It says, when she speaks, like, uh-oh, when she speaks, what, what's coming next? Her words are wise. Women, use wise words when you're speaking to your husband, your children, and, and your friends. Use wisdom. Ladies, let me just say this. Um, if you go to your friends and, and, and Facebook to tell everything about your husband, which I know I've seen it and, it, and, it's, and it's ugly, that's what, it, that's what it produces. You're gonna talk bad about your husband, guess what? He's gonna be a bad husband. And guys, if you're gonna talk about your, your wife in a negative way, she's gonna be a negative wife. But here it says, for women to use wise words, and then she gives instructions with, Kindness. She's not calling out all of your deficiencies, his deficiencies. She's speaking kind to him, not nagging. Do you know what they say about a nagging wife, right? She's like a drip, a continual drip. Do you know what it tells us men to do when she's dripping? Run <laughs> to the other side of the house, get on the top of the rooftop, and wait till she's done. And you know what happens? You're sitting down there going, wait a minute, I, I'm not done nagging yet. I know, that's why I'm up here. Stop nagging and maybe the intimacy will be better and greater. No man wants to have sex with an ugly woman. And I'm not, listen, I'm not talking about ugly here. I'm talking ugly in here. That's not attractive. Ladies, listen. In every man, okay, whether you're dating him or whether you're married to him, there is a fool and a king in that man. Moms, there is a fool and a king in your sons. You determine who you're going to speak to to get the result out of it. You're either going to get a fool or you're going to get a king. You determine it by how you speak to them and what you speak to them. And let me just say this even further, how you speak to your husband. Because you're going to teach them that this is the standard. I'm so glad it's the second service because we can go over. It's good. There's not enough green, green eggs and ham out there for you, I promise. It'll, it'll be there when you get there, okay? Um, a person will rise to the occasion of the words spoken over them. 
A person will rise to the occasion of the word spoken over them. Twelve years ago, right before we got back together, in the, in the few years preceding that, Michelle used to tell me how I was less than, how I was never enough, how I didn't load the dishwasher right, and guess what she got? Dirty dishes, right? That she got exactly what she was saying. Now, fast forward, after we, we, we got married again, which... That in just in that statement is crazy alone. She married me twice. I tell her whenever there's a problem, you married me twice. It's your issue, not mine. Okay? But now she speaks life over me all day, and I speak life over her. And guess what that does? It just raises the bar in our home. Like, I see this cord up here, right? And, like, if, if that's the word spoken over me, I want to go over that and hit the ceiling. Like, I want to go higher. There's not a man in this room who if you tell him how great he is and how wonderful he is and, and all the other things, he's not going to want to rise to go higher than that. Start speaking life over your husband. Start telling him how amazing he is. He's a warrior for God and how he's such a great protector and a great provider. And you know what? Maybe he's not there yet, but your words will get him there. It will propel him and push him into his purpose. So uh, once, once a month, Michelle and I go to Irvine. And we, and we do a marriage intensive, and it's, it's all these couples, and nine times out of ten, most of them, they're, they're all there because they're, they're having marriage challenges because their feelings got hurt. He said this, she said this, he did that, she did that. And it's all these feelings and emotions, right? And it's, it's, it's like clockwork every month. I can tell, oh, he's, he's hurt, she's hurt, whatever it is. And there was this one lady last weekend and she's like, yeah, I can't forgive him. He hurt my feelings. <laughs> you can't forgive him. Nope, I won't forgive him. He hurt my feelings too bad. And that's a, that's a worldly way of looking at it. Just be stuck. Just hold resentment. You know, unforgiveness and resentment will kill you faster than anything else. It's like committing suicide. So for all of you who have unforgiveness in this room... I'm going to live longer than you. Let's just say that. <laughs> you're killing yourself. You're, you're, you're committing spiritual suicide. But, remember but, what's the word say? Let's look. Colossians 3.12, Passion Translation again. It says, put on then. So it means put these things on. Put these things I'm about to share with you. Put them on as God's chosen ones. Remember, sons, daughters, that's who we are. Identity, right? Holy and beloved. I feel like God's just like, he's leading us here. He's like, hey, remember who you are. Remember, remember where I brought you to. Here's, here's what we put on. Compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Bearing one another. You know what that bearing one another means? It means put up with one another. Allow each other to grow. I'm not where you're at, you're not where I'm at, but you know what? You may mess something up and that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bear this thing with you. I love this one, it, it, this part of it. If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So if you got a complaint against the person next to you, forgive them. Why? Because the Lord has forgiven you. So watch this. So you must forgive them. He didn't say, well, you might want to think about it. It's an option. Like, you know, like, it is a non-negotiable from heaven that says you must forgive. Must. It's, 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 it's just, it's black and white as it'll ever get. You must forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, Watch this. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Why? Because if anything less is less than the, the, the peace of Christ, then, it, then it's not uh, anything good for you. Because then it's chaos. So let the peace of Christ dwell in your hearts, which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Watch this. And let the word of God, Lord, or the word of Christ, dwell in you richly. Let it dwell. That means give it a home. Give it a place to rest. Give it a place to settle in. We take this thing 
We let it go from our heads, where it's dangerous, that's who I used to be. I know, I know this book. I can, I can recite this book in the King James Version, left, right, up, down, backwards, sideways, you, you name it, all up here. 11 years ago, I let it get in here. Now it has a place, it has its home, right? And now it's dwelling in here richly so that when you come and you're all jacked up and you try to hurt me, I've got enough of this in me. I can forgive you. I can love you. I can be compassionate towards you. I can be kind to you. Because it's here. <clears throat> it's what I call the head heart harvest. You know, you've got to get it from your head to your heart because then, then you experience your harvest. So... I don't know what that was, but yes, Lord, okay. Um, so 12 plus years ago, if you know our story, I was a monster, I was angry, I was, uh, had affairs, I just did all kinds of dumb stuff um, while being married to Michelle. When we were going through a divorce, and in the middle of the divorce, we lost our son. And then through that whole process, Michelle got a word from God that said, I want you to believe for the restoration of your marriage. Let me just say this to you. All you need is one word from God and that'll, that'll change your whole entire world. Because I know this, that one word changed my world, praise God. Your friends don't have the wisdom that the word does. Facebook doesn't have the wisdom that the word does. And any other outlet that you can think of, some self-help book, it's not self-help, I need his help, right? And I need his word, I need a word from him. And what she started doing, she started walking by faith. She started trusting God, she said, I don't even know what that looks like. But here's what I'm gonna do, by faith, I'm gonna write down your word, and what I'm believing for him. And it's not, who, it's not who I was in the moment. It was the exact opposite. But faith doesn't, it, it's not seeing it, it's believing it. And if you allow me, I'd like to read to you what she wrote 11 plus years ago. I will wor work on being composed, but no promises. And I, I read the first word and it just wrecks me because it says faith. Faith includes a hope for things that are not seen but which are true. And the truth about you, Tommy, is that God created you be, to be a mighty man full of strength that exudes kindness and overflows with love. Your strong faith is being developed by obedience to the word of God. I pray for you that your faith will continue to grow and that nothing will be impossible to you. I have faith in you as my husband to love me and to love my girls and to show them that fathers can be faithful. Your faith in God is going to help strengthen us and all will ultimately be a great gift that you have given us. My vision for your life is that you will fight to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Do you, do you see where she's weaving in scripture? Do you see that putting it in there? Because she's taking her faith and, and partnering it with the word and based upon the word that God spoke to her. And this is what she's working. She's working the word right here. That you might walk out his plan for your life to teach and preach all over the world every hurting heart who needs to hear the message you will bring them. My vision for you sees relationships with your children healthy and centered around Jesus. You're a father who leads with strength but never harshness. A father who is respected and revered. My heart's vision for you, Tommy, is to see you successful in every way you desire, respected and admired by all who know you, and at the end of your life, known to be a truly great man who loved unconditionally. I commit to trust you as a spiritual leader of my family, trust in you as my husband. I trust that you will want only good for my life and I trust you will lead us in the direction God is showing you he has for us. 
And as you trust in the Lord more every day, you will become more faithful, fruitful, and the priest of our home who we can trust. I trust you to develop your relationship with God in your own way, and that you lead my family as a strong, loving, generous man that you are. Eleven years ago, I was not that man. Standing before you, I'm more than that right now. I have traveled the world. I have, my, my kids love Jesus. I'm the leader of my home. I'm the king and the priest of my home. I lead her well. I treat her well. I love her well. And yes, she's right. And the day that I died, and I didn't even, I have been saying this for years, but we just found this like three years ago. But I've been saying for years, all I want on my tombstone is this, he loved well. That's it. She prophesied it. She spoke it. She wrote it. By faith, she believed it. Ladies, some of you, you're, you're not where you're at in your, in your marriage right now. Some of you need to write a, a prophecy letter right, to this weekend. Before this day is over, you need to prophesy over your husband. Man, you need to prophesy over your kids. Prophesy over your marriages. Prophesy over your jobs. Whatever it is, speak life into it and watch it happen. You know, some of you, you've been living in the wrong identity because you believe someone else's broken opinion over you. We need to know what God says about us, which means we need to let his word dwell richly in our hearts. Because I can't make my lifestyle fit the word, but I can surely make the word be my lifestyle. You know, once my, my, my dad said, you'll never amount to nothing. So you're gonna, you'll never be able to do the things. you never succeed in anything. I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus. That's the greatest success there is. I had a boss once tell me, you're not, you're not that great of a salesperson. I'm the vice president of one of the largest sales organizations in America and globally. My ex-wife said, you'll never change. Isn't she missing out? <laughs> and if you're watching this, ha <laughs> ha. Listen, people speak words all the time. And you know what? We can get all spiritual. And people will even speak. They'll say, man, I got a word from God for you. Man, it's just, a, you know what? God told me it's okay for you to go ahead and get divorced. You tell them, get thee behind me, Satan. God will never speak that word. You make sure that the word somebody speaks over you lines up with his word. Because if it doesn't line up with his word, it's not from him. Okay? You double check it. And you know how you can double check it? Here's how I know. Because I'll have that, somebody will speak that word to me three or four times. It'll be consistently. And that's how, first of all, I'll know that, that God repeats himself. Because when he speaks, he echoes. But I'll also see it in God's word. And for 11 years of my life now, people have spoken, you're going to be a father to many. And I'm like, man, you ready, babe? <laughs> like, we're getting home. But, he wasn't, but they, they weren't talking about the father to my own kids. Father to many men. A father to many young men and, and young ladies. And I get, I get the privilege of doing that. But that was a word that is continually spoken over me and I receive it because his word says it. And some of you need to be careful what you're speaking. Some of you, you know what you're doing? You're, you're speaking curses over your family and you don't even know it. How about this one? We can't afford it. You're killing me. That's like, what? You're driving me crazy. That's why you're crazy. You keep, you keep claiming it as yours. I love you to death. Stop killing people. How about I love you to life? How about if we could church, when we, when we leave here today from now on, instead of saying I love you to death, just start telling people I love you to life. They're gonna be like, what? Yeah, I know. I'm going to love you to life because Jesus did too. And let me explain that to you. What an opportunity. 
I'm even careful like about the music I listen to. I'm, I'm talking even worship music because there's a worship song that's like my fear this, my fear that. No, no, that ain't my fear. Uh, fear is not mine. No, 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 no. God said he didn't give me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. He didn't give me fear, so I'm not taking it. Okay? I'm so broke, whatever. We have these things. I'm careful about the clothes I wear. Now, I know, you know I like clothes, but I'm like, it's, there's certain brands, like there's this Hellbound brand. It's amazing looking, but I can't wear something on my back that says Hellbound. I just can't. It just, I'm not going to put that on my body because then it's attaching to me. There's, there, there's been this brand of water out there and it's real popular. And again, when it gets real popular, I've got to kind of go, why? But it's called liquid death. That is so contrary to God's word because he's the living water. I told pastor in first service, I said, hey, we need to get together and we need to do a, a, a water brand called Living Water. We'll make it cool. We got Dylan who could do all the great, it's gonna be amazing. And watch people get saved and healed just by drinking water. Living water. Just like the woman at the well. Careful what you're speaking over yourself. My anger. You know, you know how I got rid of say, you know how I got rid of being so angry? I stopped claiming it as mine. I would not, I would, I, and let me tell you, I was the angriest man in the room. I'm the most peaceful man in the room now, I promise you that. Because I, I am peace. Everywhere I walk, I bring peace. I carry peace, because I've got the Prince of Peace living in me. See how I did that? Most of you don't know, because you weren't here, or you've been here, but when I first started coming to this church, I had cancer. But I never claimed that it was mine. My body was being attacked by cancer, but I didn't, I, I was, it was not mine. See, I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm complete, missing nothing. And I am healed, no longer have the cancer. So many of you are, are claiming that you can't do things. And that con is contrary to the word of God too. Oh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't, you know, play guitar. I can't, you know, go make money. I, no, but you can do all things in Christ who, strength, who, who strengthens you. That's because that's what the word says. So how about if we say, I can do this. I just need to learn how to do it. And if I fail, I get back up and I keep learning till I perfect it. But I can do it. Let me ask you this, what, what's your I am statement? You're like what? Like what's your declaration for yourself? Like what's your standard for, for, for to navigate life? I don't know, I'm blessed, I'm rich, I'm wealthy, I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm whole, I'm complete, I'm faithful, I'm loyal. You, you, you want me to keep going? Even God said, I am, I am. Even God had an I am statement. What's yours? What are you declaring over your life? Remember, all of you, as soon as I said, you know, what do you have I'm blessed. Start there. Wake up tomorrow morning, look in the mirror and go, I am blessed. Because once you start speaking, you start living it. And you start walking it out by faith. Maybe you're not blessed in the moment in your, in your natural mind, but the word already says that you're blessed. You just need to step into it by faith. Remember, little by little, light by light, I'm getting there. You know, one thing that I was impressed about when I met Michelle is that um, she had she'd been a few years out of jail and living, living for the Lord as much as she knew how. And, but what she did do, which was really impressive, she would carry uh, three by five cards around her neck, her little, little cards. Because the word says to carry the word around your neck. Bind it around your neck is what it says, right? 
Well, she took that literal. My advantage and to hers. I was being a little selfish for a minute, okay? Because she became this amazing woman of God by allowing God's word to cover her heart, be over her heart, but then also to be right there in front of her eyes when she needed it. So that when the enemy would come or a distraction would come, she'd flip open to the word and she'd say, nope, I'm gonna declare this word over my life. And that's what helped her to walk in faith. 29 years ago, I did the same thing. This card right here, 29 years old. Now here's a, more, here's a more recent one from about two years ago. But see, I'm constantly writing these things down and I carry them with me everywhere I go because I want to be reminded of who I am, whose I am, and where he's taking me. It's his word that is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It takes me where I need to go. And sometimes I, in my flesh, don't have the faith. But when I read his word in front of my eyes, it gets into my head and into my heart. And then I could step into it. And I remember the very first one I ever wrote, 29 years ago, Psalm 119, 9 through 11. Thy word that I've hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Or what, sorry, let me rephrase that. Where we shall show a young man cleanse his way? Thy word I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I forgot verse 9, sorry, backed it up. What is he saying? I've hid your heart in here so that I won't end up in the wrong place, doing the wrong things. That is stuck with me. Now, have I always lived it? No. But it's a conviction when I'm not doing the right thing because I've hid it in my heart. But now it's there as a reminder to keep clean. Some of you need to write these things out, carry them with you everywhere you go until they become how you're living. This is what I call, you know, work the word because the word works. Work the word because the word works. Be generous with his word. Do you know it's free to give God's word out? He already paid the price for it all. I turned 55 back on November 25th and pastor turned 25 because he still looks 25. We share the same birthday, it's pretty amazing. Huh? But 5.39 a.m. I wake up and I have an 11 minute video on my phone and it's men from all over the world in a video put together, speaking life over me and thanking me for all that I've spoken into theirs. You know how powerful that is? To hear it before I'm dead, before it doesn't matter anymore. Some of you need to leave here today and go call your mom or your dad or your brother, your sister, your aunt or your uncle, whoever it is, and say, I'm thankful for you. I forgive you. I'm sorry for whatever it is. Do it before it doesn't count anymore. You know how much that like, that's one of the greatest gifts I've received in 55 years. God's word spoken over my life. Celebrate people now and think before you speak. Be wise with your words. And if you don't know, ask, like, if you don't know what to do, ask God, like, what, what, what do you have for me? Go Google it. You know, when I write my, like, I write my messages now, like, two-thirds of the time is cut off because I have Google. What does the word say about, and it's, pfft. And I have to discern that as well. Holy Spirit, give me truth. But, like, there shouldn't be an excuse now with anything and everything you got going on in your life to go to God's word and say, where, where are you taking me? Remember what I said earlier, there's power in your tongue and it brings either life or it brings death. We reap the consequences of it all. We only speak death about someone or ourselves from a place of death or, or, or better yet of just what we see with our eyes and our natural eyes, not what the truth of God's word says. So we're constantly thinking negative and negative, negative. 
And how you speak about others really reflects the level of, for, level of forgiveness that you've given yourself. See, faith needs to be connected to the word. Faith works by love. Michelle, Michelle could have never written this if she wasn't in faith. Michelle could have never written this if she was in unforgiveness. Michelle could have never written this if she wasn't trusting God and believing God. She didn't see it. You know what she saw? She saw the exact opposite. But God. God's word is true. It's truth and reality. It's not feelings and emotions. You cannot be in unforgiveness and faith at the same time. You cannot be in unforgiveness and faith at the same time. Some of you right now, at the sound of my voice, need to forgive yourselves and forgive the people that you're holding on to. Because really, you're not holding on to them, they're holding on to you. Have you forgiven you? You don't understand, preacher. You don't understand all I've done. No, I understand it. Because I've probably done worse. I know. And you know what I know? What his word says, it says, I'm redeemed, I'm restored, I'm forgiven, I'm healed, I'm whole, I'm complete, miss, missing nothing. Because he forgave me. It was interesting, Greg, Greg and I were talking uh, between services, and I said, you know, God will forgive your, your past, your present, your future. And to Jesus, everything was the future. Think about that. Your past, present, and future were his future. Let that rattle around in there for a minute, right? Everything that was going to come, he had already forgiven it on the cross. That means everything you came into this room with, he's forgiven it. What you did five minutes ago, he forgave it. What you did yesterday, he forgave it. What you might do this week, he forgave it. That doesn't mean live like that, but it means to, to know that if you mess up, he's forgiven you if you've received him as your Lord and Savior. If you've repented and, re and renounced the world and the devil and received Jesus as, as, as your Savior, that's when your sins are forgiven forever and ever. You receive that forgiveness by trusting in him, making him the king of your life. Will you allow yourself to be forgiven today? Can you just open up your heart and say, God, I need forgiveness. Please forgive me. And he answers with a yes. Will you close your eyes, bow your heads in this moment, this precious, holy, sacred moment. If you're in this room and you say, preacher, I need God's forgiveness. And I, I, I just, I need it right now. If that's you, raise your hand. I need a relationship with the Lord. I need to be forgiven of my sins. If I see you, I see you, I see you. How precious. Anybody else? I see you, I see you, I see you. Come on, hands all over the room. I see you, young man, I see you. I knew it was you in the beginning. He's known. I see you. Thank you for your... I'm going to ask you to do this. Everybody that raised their hand, everybody that raised their hand, raise your hand high. Can, can, we, can we operate by faith for this quick moment? I want you to step up out of your seat and come to the altar right now. Come on. Come on, ma'am. I see you back there. Come on. 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 I saw you. Come on. Come on. Remember, remember, I, I said at the, at the beginning of service, we're in the presence of God. And you are known. And he's been seeing this all along. And he's not surprised by you being here. But I can tell you this, as a family, we're excited that you're up here this morning. And if you would, if you'll allow me, I'd like to pray with you. The church is going to back me up and they're going to pray along with us. 
Kind of like this thing, if I were inviting you to my home, I'd want to give you the address so you knew where you were going. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer so you know where you're going. We good with that? All right, church, we ready? Let's go. Father God, thank you for bringing me here today to save me, to forgive me, to let me know that I'm loved by you, seen by you, heard by you. Now, Jesus, I receive what you did on the cross for me. And I repent of all my sins. Be my Lord, my Savior, Holy Spirit, come. Lead me, guide me, teach me in all your truths and all your ways. In Jesus' name. Look up here. I'm going to give you some of your first I am statements today, okay? Ready? I am saved. I am born again. I am a child of God. Those are your I am statements for this week. You say those and declare those of yourself all week long. I'm saved, born again. I am a child of the living God. Amen. Church, can we celebrate these folks this morning? Thank you guys for going back to your seats. Thank you. Bible school. Hey guys. Hey guys, for those of you that, that surrendered your life to the Lord, there's one of my friends is going to be in the back there. And he's got a Bible for you so that you can get started in God's word like we spoke about this morning. Again, if you gave your life to the Lord this morning, I have a friend in the back who has a Bible for you to get you started in God's word. Listen, don't leave this room. If you need prayer, I've got prayer partners coming up right now. If you need a, a word in season, you need God to speak, it's, you need the, the word of God spoken over your life, these people are more than equipped to do that with you and for you. Don't leave the room without being prayed for if you need it. Church, what an honor to preach and speak to you this morning. I pray you were changed.